So in the previous video, we discussed the formal definition of a limit, and there was a lot to discuss. So in this video, we're going to do something very similar um, hope to, hopefully, to hopefully master the, the concept of derivative given with limits. So let's, let's define a function. This time we're going to do f of x is equal to x to the third power. First, let's graph this. So this function looks something, so that's the y-axis, x-axis. Function should look something like this. So this is f of x. And let's say we want to figure out the, or sorry, figure out the slope of the tangent line at this given point, this given point. And we'll say that this is x is equal to two. Well, we can do this by taking the derivative of the function and, and uh, evaluating the derivative at this point. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's all right. We're about to talk about exactly what to do here. So essentially we wanna figure out, let's first talk about conceptually what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out the slope. I'm trying to draw a tangent line, uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. So we're trying to find the slope of this tangent line that I just drew. Again, it's tangent to this curve at this point only. So they, sh they share this point, which is two comma eight, right? Because two to the third is eight. So we wanna figure out the slope of this point, which I will call M. Now it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense to find the slope of a given point, right? But it does make sense to find the slope of a tangent line at a given point. And we can do this by uh, evaluating uh, the, the limit uh, between, or we can, we can do this by evaluating the, the, the slope between two points on this curve that are squeezed together. So let's say we have this won't be mathematically rigorous, but let's say between this point and this point, and then we just keep squeezing these points together, and then it becomes this point and this point, this point and this point, and then eventually it, it, you can think of it as just one point. But it, but what we're doing is we're taking the we're still taking the slope between two points, and these do these two points we want their, their their delta x right their change in x to go to zero. So we want their delta x to go to zero, and that's where the limit comes. So let's figure out the slope of this tangent line. So the formal definition uh, of the derivative is because that's what we're doing. We're finding the slope of the tangent line at a given point. We're taking the derivative and evaluating at a certain point. And the formal definition of a derivative is the limit as the change in x goes to zero of f of x plus change in x minus f of x over the change in x. Now in this case, our f of x is x to the third. So let's just plug those values in. So we get the limit as the change in x goes to zero of, well, we're going to plug in x plus change in x for this function. So it's x plus change in x to the third power minus f of x. Well, that's just x to the third over, over delta x. Now, Remember, we want to figure it out at x equals two. So let's replace all the x's with two. And just keep reminding yourself of what we're doing. We're finding the slope of the tangent line um, at x equals two. And the tangent line is tangent to the curve at that point, x equals two. All right, so let's plug in two. We get the limit as a, a limit of this expression here as delta x goes to zero. So two plus change in x to the third minus x to the third over delta x. All right, so now this is a bit tedious here, but, and, and, and you find this, this whole process might be tedious and you might be afraid that you have to do this every time. And you know, if you do, then this becomes extremely long for, for essentially every derivative problem you wanna do. But uh, in a few videos, you're gonna learn that there are shortcuts that make this process very, very simple. Um, and, and the reason why we're you know, not going straight to the shortcuts is because, because we, wanna, we wanna introduce 
exactly what's going on and what a derivative actually represents. Um, because if we just straight go straight to the shortcuts, then it's like, you know, where did that come from? So we want to do it this way first to figure out actually what it what we're doing and what it represents, and then we'll discuss the shortcuts. So let's evaluate two plus change in x to the third. Um, all right, so two plus change in x to the third. Well, that's just two plus change in x times two plus change in x times two plus change in x. Let's figure this out first. This is four plus four delta x plus delta x squared. And again, delta x is, is the same thing as just change in x. So I'm going to use them both, and then we multiply by that. All right, let's see. We get 8 plus 8 delta x plus 2 delta x squared plus 4 delta x plus, uh, let's see, uh, 4 delta x plus 4 delta x squared plus delta x to the third. All right, let's try to simplify this a little bit. Um, we can combine the like terms, so 8 and 4 delta x is 12 delta x, and then this is 6 delta x squared. So I'm going to write them from the uh, increasing to decreasing power, so delta x to the third plus, plus 6 delta x squared plus 12 delta x, and then plus 8. All right, and then let's, um, so now let's plug that all into here. So this is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of all of that hopefully we have space plus eight minus minus x oh sorry so x to the third is actually going to be two to the third right because we we need to plug in two for all x's so this will just be minus eight and that works out pretty nicely because the eights just cancel so that goes away so we're left with and again, this is very tedious, but I promise once you learn the shortcuts, then you'll be like, wow, um, I'm, you know, you'll, you'll be glad that you learned it this way first because it helps you understand it. But you'll also be glad that you did learn the shortcut because it makes everything so much easier. Anyway, so we have delta x to the third plus six delta x squared plus 12 delta x because the eights canceled all over delta x. You can factor out a delta x from the top. Again, I keep want to write. I, I want to keep writing the limit because I want to be a, at least mathematically rigorous here. So we have delta x factored out. We have delta x squared inside, plus six delta x, and then plus twelve, and then all over delta x. And this is great that we can, we were able to factor that out, factor that out because if we initially plugged in zero for delta x, we notice we will be dividing by zero, which you know we cannot do. But we can cancel these and evaluate the limit. So this becomes the limit as delta x goes to zero of delta x squared plus six delta x plus 12. Okay, well, now we can actually just plug in zero for delta x. And this just comes out, well, zero squared is zero. Six times zero is zero, so this is just 12. Phew, we are done. So 12 is the slope of this tangent line at this given point right here. And what 12 does is it explains the rate of growth of this curve f of x at x equals 2. And, and 12 is, is, is the derivative of f of x evaluated at 2. So again, this was a lot in this video as well. But, um, but we will discuss all of this, you know, every video for derivatives. So don't worry too much if you missed a couple parts here and there. You're, you're more than welcome to rewatch this video as well. I think that would definitely help. See you guys in the next video.